Good morning and good afternoon for those that are on the East Coast. I would like to thank you very much for joining our webinar on improving literacy in our communities and schools. Today we have with us Leslie Beeson, Malika Chambers, and myself, Andre Lewis. Uh, Leslie Beeson is the Assistant Superintendent Educational Service for the Benicia Unified School District. Malika Chambers is the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the City of Benicia and myself, Andrew Lewis, I'm the president and founder of Literary Engineers and Literary Tools Nonprofit 501c3. Today's agenda, Literacy in America, Needs and Obstacles, Literary Portal, Case Study and Demo, and at the end, Questions and Answers. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the state of literacy in America. 45, millions American, 45 million Americans are functionally illiterate. And what that means is why they may be able to understand and sound out basic words, in terms of the deeper knowledge and, and engagement that you have with reading, it's not there. 85% of juvenile offenders struggle with reading and as we mentioned, comprehension. Three out of four people on public assistance cannot read. And 53% of students failed the 2022 a uh, CASP test in English, which is how the state assessed as language understanding and proficiency. And Leslie, as an education professional, what do these numbers also tell us? Well, we know that um, we have a long way to go in teaching students to uh, robustly be able to read and comprehend all kinds of texts. Um, oh, I want to talk a little bit about that last statistic that you just shared. Not only as a whole uh, state do we only have uh, less than 50% of students being able to read at grade level, we know that when we look at particular student groups, so students with disabilities, our African American students, our students who are Hispanic, homeless, uh, and foster youth, they perform at an even lower level. And so the crisis is real. So how do we overcome this? So take a few minutes and in the chat, please respond to the following question. What are the top priorities for schools and programs today? And then the second part of that is, is improving literacy part of those priorities? So two questions. One, your top priorities for schools and programs. And two, is improving literacy one of those top priorities? So to, to get us started, I would say yes, improving literacy as the reason we're here is one of those top priorities. Um, and then going beyond that, improving literacy, what does that mean in, in the school district? Is it just test scores or is it? I think it goes well beyond test scores. I think that's one measure. Um, I think we have to do progress monitoring along the way to see if what we're doing is making a difference for, for children. I think we have to really rethink what uh, the teaching of reading, early reading especially, looks like. It has done a major pendulum swing, as uh, many things do in education, from the days of whole language to balanced literacy, and now we know so much more about the brain science and how students actually learn to read. And so we have a lot of work to do with our staff and our curriculum to make sure that uh, we're using top quality curriculum and we have training for teachers so that they really understand how students learn to read. And I think another challenge um, that we need to address is ensuring that the, the materials that we use, not only to teach reading, but in all content areas all the way through school, are reflective of the communities that we're serving so that students can feel um, connected to, they see authentic um, uh, material presented to them that they feel like they can find that joy and that connection to. Yeah, one of the things I remember when we were having our discussions on our commission of the Benicia Reeves program that struck me, I think it was a statement that made that there's a 10 million word gap of word usage between those kids that are avid readers and communicators versus those that are not. Yes, at least a 10 million word gap. And so one of the other things I think we need to um, figure out is how do we engage families before those children even get to our school so that we can really get kids off on a more equal playing field. And um, we know that early literacy and language is a key component of that. When kids can hear complex language, they hear vocabulary, they're read to, they're sung to, they're talked to, at every moment of their upbringing, they will come to school with a uh, more, um, 
ability and readiness to engage in the formal curriculum. And with that, and that was one of the reasons why I helped with the portal because I took that. And what was unique about it is my goal with the portal was to try to get kids to read at least 10% more. If I can get our kids to at least do 10% more of what they're currently doing, and then giving the parents a tool that will allow them to communicate more with their children on those subject matters, then we can meet our common goal of increasing literacy, increasing communication, increasing language and learning. So the portal was that platform, I call it the Netflix of literacy, <laughs> is that we're bringing all these resources into your home where you don't have to leave. And it's on a device that your kids are used to using that allows them to be associated with it and connected with it and they use it for a positive versus IE just playing games. Now we're providing knowledge and we're giving tools to our, uh, to our families. Absolutely. Great. Periodically in our curriculum of education, we taught reading a variety of different ways. If you remember back in the 80s, there was whole language and there was, you know, a move away from phonics, which is allowing us to phonetically spell words. But now we're at a state where reading with a highly technological society, reading is more required. And Leslie, you work in the school district. What else does the statistic tell us about reading scores? Thank you, Malika. Um, for sure. So we know that we are not having the levels of uh, literacy and comprehension in our schools and in our students as we would like. Every We know that students need to be able to read on grade level by third grade or it really is a detriment to their success later on in their schooling and life. Um, with the statistic that uh, Dr. Chambers shared, about 53% of the students are not meeting grade level standards as um, measured on our state test. That statistic is even lower um, or higher, I should say, for different student groups. So students who are in special education, our African-American students, our Hispanic students, they're performing at, at even um, more uh, concerning level. And so we definitely need to really rethink how literacy and uh, reading are taught in the early grades in school. So how do we overcome this? I think um, one is really knowing what best practices are and that pendulum has swung, as Dr. Chambers said, back in the 80s, it was whole language, it was the three cueing method, uh, method. what does it look like, what does it sound like, does it make sense? Um, and I think we created a, um, a, a group of scholars who are not using um, effective strategies when they hit words and, and um, content that they aren't interested in, that they don't know, they don't have any tools in their toolbox to figure out what's happening in text. And so we really need to rethink how we're teaching literacy uh, and reading in the schools. And then the other thing, and we'll get into more of this later on in the webinar, is we really need to have all kids from the time they're zero to they go to school really come from literacy and language rich homes because that helps to even the playing field as kids enter school. Thank you, Dr. Beetson. Okay, so we've got a couple of yes, it's a priority. Mark Patton, thank you. Um, and then also Carolina Castilla says, motivating students to actually enjoy reading is a priority. And yes, improving literacy is the same goal. One other comment from Mark, functional literacy as well as career specific literacy will be important in the digital age moving forward. And we agree, yeah. we agree. Question two. What are the biggest obstacles to improving literacy in schools and programs? And not necessarily, when I say obstacles, I don't necessarily mean challenge, because it's always going to be a challenge. But when I think about the word obstacles, I mean, what are those things that are getting in the way of us being able to improve literacy in schools? And so we'll give you a few minutes to populate the chat. Well, while people are uh, thinking about that question and putting ideas in the chats, um, I can talk from a school perspective. One is accessing uh, relevant curriculum that is both um, reflective of the science of reading, it's reflective of the students in our community so that they see themselves and they can relate to uh, the textbooks, the curriculum that's in all content areas. And I think another uh, challenge an obstacle is time because anytime we're changing methodology, um, we have to provide robust uh, professional development for mm -hmm. our staff. And so finding the time to do that and to be into classrooms and supporting um, students 
uh, in their learning. I think from the classroom perspective, that is one of uh, the biggest challenges. And then I think, um, as, as I mentioned earlier, really helping our community value and see the importance of literacy at a very early age, not waiting until they get to school, but really surrounding kids um, in, in language and literacy from the very, very early ages. Um, one Please. of the things that we did in our community in Benicia is to really identify and articulate that we are committed to all kids reading on grade level by third grade, which we know every school district in uh, the United States wants to, but we made it very public and proud and saying we're going to do whatever we need to do to make sure that that happens. And one of the things that we did was we, uh, back in 2019, started a partnership with our city because we know that um, literacy and its uh, reverse illiteracy can be a community issue. And so mm -hmm. we wanted to really partner with our city um, our mayor, our city council, our businesses in town to help promote this idea of early literacy and language. And so helping remind families, um, don't just put kids on devices when you're in the grocery store, but talk to them, talk to them about what they're seeing, ask questions from their, when they're little itty bitties, you know, and, and start talking about them as you're getting them dressed in the morning. You're gonna put on this shoe and that shoe so that they start to hear language and they can mimic that and that helps them uh, develop vocabulary, sentences, ideas of complex thought when they enter school. And so it helps mm -hmm. to le level the playing field. So we started a program, a campaign, if you will, called Benicia Reads, and it is um, a partnership between the city, as I said, and our school district. And um, we are so fortunate because at that time uh, we have many different organizations coming on board and one being uh, Mr. Andre Lewis here and he brought to us this idea of a literary portal to help create access for all uh, families and children and I believe he's going to talk a little bit about that now. Hey, thank you Leslie, I appreciate that and it's just amazing being an organization and being part of a city that really has a value for their community and with that I've been writing books since 07 and my comp my contribution to this project was to figure out a way to allow my books to be seen by more in our community, especially for those that were not av available to afford them. So with my team, we came up with this idea to create a platform that could be done on the internet to give access to those kids and those families at a reasonable price. So our concept was called the Literary Portal. So I'm going to give you a video of what the Literary Portal offers. Welcome to the Literary Portal. Once you've signed in, you can see this screen. You can see the books. Title, year is published, language, and if audio is available. For emerging readers, we have access for voice. Jonathan, Bianca, Olivia, and Chris. Se estaban reuniendo el term. For those that order the facilitation guides, they will be available. This is exercise is going to take you up to five days, a 30 minute exercise each day. Workbooks are included with all orders. These are free and downloadable. We have resources that are free and downloadable, like definitions for our financial book, explaining budgets for families, youth, young adults, families, compound interests. We have videos for some of the books, like our oral hygiene book we have. Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Paul Nutter. I'm a pediatric dentist, and I'm here today to talk about this wonderful book, Alexander Renee. And we're also doing inspirational videos of people talking about their why and their passions. Hi, my name is Rosetta Upshaw. I am an award-winning attorney, a past president of Black Women Lawyers. And then there will be controls for those administration personnel. Uh, like you see, we only have 14 books on there now. I'm gonna click here. Alexander A versus Dr. A was not visible. 
go back and go back to the catalog. Now we have 15. Thank you very much for visiting the literary portal. So that's our literary portal. Uh, basically, it was giving us an opportunity to put our books on there, and you can see some of the very basic aspects of what we're trying to do. And we're going to make this available to people uh, across the country. Another aspect for those that we're doing is a way to give administrators the opportunity to see the information that's inside of this and to give some analytics. So I'm going to show a quick video of that functionality. This is the analytics from the administrator dashboard. You can select a school district as an administrator. You can choose your date, hit submit, and I show you grade, the numbers, and the total logins. And this is all done for the month of June of last year as our beta test. And again, you can see the numbers. And another aspect that we wanted to bring in, because as we were working with organizations and cities, um, we realized that I got some feedback. They're like, we really need to know some metrics to make sure that this is a functional uh, program. Analytics and the numbers really make a difference. So we incorporated to bring that into our program by creating this. Also, we're creating a dashboard for administrators to monitor the KPIs. So it's just total usage time, repeat users, books access, books completed. Basically, we have the flexibility to add any of these KPIs and be able to generate that data for you where you can see it on a monthly basis and be able to compare. So that's the literary portal. Um, and this is personal to me. Uh, I think about our, our communities and the things that we've done. And I've taken my company, Literary Engineers, uh, to be able to customize books for organizations uh, to show this impact and talk about connections. Our books are customizable. So when an organization needs something in particular, i.e. something about STEM, about bullying, we're able to create a customized book. We did a book for Valero where we talked about STEM science, technology, engine arts, and math. Uh, we did one for services for Rotary. We've done some, for, we did the national book for PAL. Uh, so that's the best thing about it. Instead of me trying to tell you what you need, we ask you what you want, and we provide those resources to you. Our availability, we have over a million people have access to our work. You just haven't heard about us. You know, I don't have to market. I actually just come directly to the source because it's not about me, it's about helping you and your communities. And these are some of the organizations that have worked with us in the past. And what makes us different is the personal connection. We just don't hand a book to a child and say, read. We actually go out to engage them. We make sure they know that they're special and that the books that we're sharing with them are personally made just for them. You know, my willingness is that I've done in the past, since I've been doing this in 07, was that anyone who ever got our books, I made a personal commitment to come see you for free. I will pay for my own travel, my own hotel, my own rental car, only thing I wanted you to do was just get books for your kids so they can take them home because many of our books that are given to our children are some of the only books that they actually own that belong to them. To get in contact with us, you can take a snapshot of this right now and you can click on the QR code. You have my information, our publication information, and also you have access to the literary portal. And at this time, what I would like to do is just give opportunities for some questions and answers. Well, we do have one comment from um, online that I wanted to just share. Um, this is from James Caniford. He's listening live from London, England. Wow. He wanted to share that the utmost importance of phonic knowledge and phonics, ma phonics matched books, which is just the, what Andre was talking about, custom customizable books, in the zone, child zone of proximal development. We have seen early reading achievement raise well over 90% in our schools. Keep up the good work on the other side of the pond. So <laughs> thank you for that comment, James. <laughs> I appreciate that. And, and that's the thing, too, what I've noticed as I go around the country and we've done these programs, we did some beta testing in Louisiana, and it was very um, insightful to see the engagement with the kids uh, when they have someone personally there with them and they have the flexibility to have things, especially those of color, of children, multicultural, uh, multicultural 
uh, subject matters that are covered and the diversity and equities that we put it within our books, that's what makes them unique. It's not a cookie cutter approach. You know, it's not like I just take things out here and just put them there, no. We listen to our clients, we listen to the organizations that are trying to convey these messages and create those customized books for you. And the portal, man, now we have an opportunity to give them access, no matter where they go, if they're on a cell phone, iPad, laptop, you have the capability now to reach and have those accesses for you. Do, any more of the questions? No more questions. We can leave the chat, the question and answer uh, queue open for a few minutes if you want to ask a question that we can follow up with later while we have our closing remarks. Yeah. So, slide please. So my gift to those that are listening today, just for joining the webinar, um, at the end, we're gonna be sending out an email that's gonna give you the opportunity to get everything we've shown you today for $10 per family to have access per student. Also, the very first five organizations or school districts that sign up 1,000 subscriptions, I'm gonna make a personal visit to that school district on my own and come speak to your kids and do presentations. And then I have the video challenge. I would love to see those that are engaged with the portal to share a video with us about how inactive, I mean, how active they were with it. What did they like about it? What else could we do? Just showing what your engagements are with your community, with your families. Uh, and if doing so, my gift will be, I will be sending out some personally signed books to those students in classrooms. My why in life is changing and saving lives through literacy. And that's what this is all about. I'm very blessed to have the things that have happened in my life to become a pilot for FedEx and I've been flying around the world and have those opportunities. And I all knew it stemmed from reading and giving people the opportunity to have that knowledge. So once again, thank you so much for taking the time to join us on our webinar. I know we had a couple of little technical difficulties, but hey, I'm excited. And you know, nothing ever hurts when you're doing it for your love and trying to help one another. So once again, I thank you so much. And I have to personally thank Leslie Beeson for her time and giving the opportunity to work with the Benicia Reeves program to help me develop this program to, to get it out into our community. And to Malika Chambers, thank you so much for your opportunity for bringing that perspective to what we do. You know, because the thing is, if we don't do this as a society, if we don't start right now trying to work to improve the literacy in our, in our country, it's gonna get worse. And I don't wanna see as that old saying was, no child should be left behind because of knowledge. We're too important of a country, too much value, too much prosperity, not to be able to share this information to others. So when you go back, hopefully you'll take this time to share with other people that you may know that were not able to join with our webinar, to be able to share this information with them so we can have this grow organically across the country. So once again, thank you so much for this time. Any passing thoughts before we leave? No, this was a great time. Yeah. I was glad to be. Thank you Absolutely. for having us. Thank you. Oh, this is just, I love it. So once again, thank you so much. And uh, we wish you the very best. And at any time, you can respond to the emails that we're going to send out to you. Uh, those should be going out shortly, uh, probably later on this week, if no later than early next week for those promotions. So once again, thank you so much for joining our first webinar. Yeah. Thank All right. You. See you. Bye-bye.